uh, we are here with you uh, for a day set to have a kind of a discussion or interaction. I've done it before with different groups. In fact, this is the sixth school I'm addressing teachers. And those opportunities I'm given, I also talk to the students. Uh, Father Dennis is uh, now four years old in priesthood. What I've done and I love most is my priesthood, yes. And when I was ordained, I asked myself, what should I do for the rest of my life that excites me, that makes a change? I got to learn one principle. Do what you love every day for one hour. In five years, you become an expert. I didn't know what that meant until I started making use of that principle. I chose to write every day 1,000 words, every day for one hour. And out of that discipline, I've published five books. The first copies, we are out of the order, but we are going to have a reprint. And uh, they are here, four of them. And I'm just finishing my sixth book, Becoming a Leader Who Leads in Listening. The second book that I did in 2019 is the book entitled the truth from within. We all, if you remember well, faced some difficult time when we saw on our television or on our newspapers people giving up, people killing themselves, people doing some nasty things. I sat down with a group of priests and some friends of mine. We asked, why do people give up? One of my senior priests, when I was in Rome for some conference, he told me, you are asking a wrong question. Now he's our father general. He asked me this. Can you go to those people and ask them whether they are conscious of their soul? And if they are, help them to take care of it. Wow. Look at somebody next to you and ask, do you have a soul? How often do you take care of it? The third book I did is this book. Our whole life is a mission. Now, where I put the principle in practice, our whole life is a mission determined by now. Now that I realize that I could keep writing, and out of that, two books were published, I started guiding somebody else, or now they can also do something to achieve some great goals in their life. That's why I say now. It is determined by now. Like now, we have this session with you. Well, we may have sides over it. Maybe some of us, we didn't expect it a day like today. Maybe some of us will take it seriously. But I want, I want to assure you that any one of us is going to take it seriously, it's going to be a life changer. A life changer. The fourth book I did, this was published early 2020. This got published in July 2020, The Cry of the Young People. If today you walked around, you are lucky you work in an institution of young people, have you ever asked yourself, why do young people from time to time find themselves in a mess? Many of them do cry because they don't know themselves. And that's why I did reflect after meeting a number of them, training them, accompanying them in parishes and in institutions, I wrote this book. As a message for you who takes care of the young people and the young people themselves, when I address real issues that affect them, it's a material that you can never let go. The last book I did during the COVID. That was your COVID, by the way. <laughs> Where were you? At home. Doing what? <laughs> okay. I love that. Avoiding. Because every one of us was told we self quarantine. I think that's the first time that for Capra came across. We, we, we tried to talk about self quarantine. What does that mean? But look. Were you told in self-quarantine is not an opportunity to grow? 
many of us start wearing, lamenting, arguing. I sat down in my village because I was also from Omape going back to Nairobi. I couldn't go back. For the first time, 15 years ago, I found myself in my home three and a half months with my parents. There were no masses said in public. I turned one of the rooms in my house to be a chapel. I kept saying masses there. But I turned also my sitting room to be my office. I wrote this book, Grow During Your Dark Moment. When things seem not to work, there is an opportunity not to change your goals, but to change your plan. I had, uh, last year, I can assure you, my whole year was poked with retreats, workshops, and name it. But when I could not go meet people, do you know what? I started online training. I started recording videos. Now you go to my caring listener, you get 250 videos. I never knew. I said that a symbol with my small phone. When things get, got complicated, I was told, you need to be smart. I advanced. And that's, look, I do this, in fact. I set the camera, I come and sit, I keep talking. Now that time, thank God, we have laptops that have a front camera. When you talk to people, one of the systems I use, it's an audio. I can see how my student signs in, or the group I have at that moment, and we keep talking. I remember during the whole week, I gave an online retreat that brought together people across the world, those who knew me. Look at that. So when you become creative, you change things in your life. Today, I'm not sure what experience you have. But here I have a testimony of those I've mentored since 2018. They have given their stories here. From doctors, family people, religious, giving their experiences how life has changed after we met. Today, I want to trust this. Our meeting is not going to be taken for granted. And that's why, honestly, I want to beg every one of us, let's take this time seriously. First, to change our lives, for us to change the life of the learners in this. One of the videos we did for one hour, and you can find it on our YouTube, we had a conversation with Dr. Rita, who is doing research around what affects learning, especially in secondary schools and primary schools. She says this, unless educators turn to have the aim of putting out the best out of the learners, we are still yet very far from reaching our goals. Unless you make it a personal commitment that you need to extract from your students the best. Now, you need to sit down and ask yourself, what is the best from each of these students? That's a big question. It's not what you're going to just say, hey, today we need to do this and this. Oh, no. Give me a break. It's until you ask, who are still struggling? Who need more time? Who need some extra guidance that you can get right in your duty as a, an educator? Having said that, then, I want us we come together to have a serious reflection. I don't know whether you are ready for it. Are you ready? Are you sure? By the way, take a piece of paper. Oh, or even in your notebook. Just write your expectation. What are you expecting from Father Dins now that you have heard who he is? Yes, that's a personal question. What's your expectation? You are teachers. You like asking questions. What is your expectation? At least I promise you, in the next three hours, what is your expectation? 
Wow. That's a cool one. Honesty, whether it's personal, just what is your expectation? Are we there? If you are bold enough, you can share with us what you expect. What is your expectation? Look at this. When we don't have something that we really look or yearn for, but then maybe we may spend some time here and say, I wasted my morning. I don't want to waste any one of you this time here. What's your expectation? I guess you have it. Now, let me tell you another very key question. I don't want to assume that every one of us sit the dear we are all equal. Are we? Especially emotionally. Now, that is a nice one. Emotional status. I don't want to assume that COVID came and left you the same. No. But I want to believe COVID came and challenged each one of us differently. Now, who can share with us what they went through during the COVID? Whether good or bad. How was your experience? I like your sincerity. <laughs> yeah. You try to make ends meet because you saw maybe you may not come back to school. That's very sincere. Someone else? Now, let me tell you, the greater percentage of the people we may have lived with, they went through regrets in one way or the other. But now, me with you here, we want to say this. Regacy can never be built on regrets. Legacy can never be built on regrets. And because this is a learning institution, can you help me understand what is legacy? What is legacy? Hey, please, to changa mukebana. What is legacy? Wali mwa kingereza. Time to show off. Eh? Pull up your dictionary. Check it out. What is the a legacy. Yes, sir. This is something you should leave. after your passion. Thank you. It's something you leave. Not even when you have passed on, when you have moved on. That is another way. What people can remember you? Yes, that which you live, you can be remembered of it. Some time back, somebody challenged me on the same. Asked me this simple question. What legacy do you want to leave? I realized that he said there are three ways to leave legacy. One, get married, get children, they will be named after you. After you. How many of us are married? Congratulations. It's true. Your children will repair your name as far as you don't become a criminal so that they denounce you. Number two, they said you go somewhere, plant a tree, and say, planted by so and so. Have you seen those trees? Even now, they are, you know. And lastly, I was told, now, somebody like me, what do you think I can do to be remembered? To put your words down, your thoughts. In this book, Our Whole Life is a Mission, I've written an experience of my twin brother. And I say this, I envy my twin brother because he will live longer than me. And everyone who reads that place, they pick their phone and say, Father, why are you jealous of your twin brother? 
And I'm like, yeah, he's going to live longer than me. He said, who is your twin brother and where is he? We have never heard of him. I say, my twin brother is my legacy. I want to live in a manner when this body is no longer living, I would have left some impacting thoughts, experiences, memories with the people I've met. Wow. Wow. Is that your dream? Is that your dream? It's true, and I'm committed to it. So I make sure each day I give my best, even when things seem to be difficult. When you, you check on uh, uh, Luke chapter 17, 12 to 19, it's a time to make the right choices now. It's the, today, and moment, is the moment you need to question what are you holding to? What are you focused on? How many of us got into teaching profession by accident? No, be sincere. I could have to the same otherwise. And how many of us are passionate of teaching? Thank you. So some of us, we are there. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Now, in life, there are four seasons. Four seasons. Season number one, we go through good times. As a, a teacher, I'm very sure when you graduated, what do you, how did you feel? Excited. You, you called all the people from the village to see you wearing a gown. And I think you came with that gown to the family, and even you gave your mother to wear and your father, so people would be confused who graduated. Wow. When, what about when you got married? You celebrated. What else did you celebrate? Take a moment, write some good moments you can remember of your life. You know, those moments you feel like, wow. Let me tell you, when I got to Dada Priest, hey, my friend, the climax of my 11 years journey. Imagine, waiting for 11 years. How many of us are my contemporary who finished their Form 4 in 2004? It took me 11 years to become a priest. Oh, yeah. Do I look so old? Somebody's scared. <laughs> 2000 and fro. And immediately I joined the seminary where it took me 11 years. It's not that I, there was anything wrong. Hours takes 11 years, even up to now. For everyone. So I don't regret. But I treasure everything I learned during the process. I learned during the process. So during good time, what I need to invite you to do is to invest in yourself. When you are in good health, do something that can sustain you maybe when your health is weak. Like, you know, we talk about keeping fit these days. Don't just see food and harm it as if it's your enemy. Or don't get to eat anything that comes in front of you. Eat well, exercise well. You know, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Why? Why? Would you just go for easy things? Is it comes? Is it goes? Sincerity. Yes, that is a game. You have no rules of the game. The masters have it. You become a slave of the game you know not. So I want you to ask this simple question. What are you going to do today that you are okay to invest in yourself? I started investing myself in writing. Oh, yes. It's not that I, I don't do what pertains to priesthood. In fact, if I have a mass somewhere, I will be there 30 minutes before. 30 minutes before. 
and I give my best. I give retreats. I accompany people. And thus, I have taken it into an extra. I invested myself. Now, be just sincere to yourself. What are you going to do to invest in yourself for? Season number two, tough times. Corona came through our force. It really messed us badly. I think some of us still we have some goons of what happened. How many of us who are damned? Uh, that's not the right. <laughs> Which is the right? Uh, give me the right word. How many of us? Somebody just walked out of your life during this COVID. Take courage, my brother. It may be a family person, a friend. You know. You know when you really. That time, you will try to call, and they are always busy. They just walked out. Don't blame them. They were not meant for you. They were not meant for you. A friend, indeed. Sometimes, we force things. We force people, you know, <laughs> to be there for us. No, don't. Let people be people. And you will know them during your tough time. Now, what happens? Like this morning I was driving down from my home and there's this always people who are in a rush of attacking on corners. So if you see somebody's overtaking and there is a car coming, what do you do? What if you don't slow down? You may say, I'm on the right. But if this person is hit, it will really crush all of you. So when tough times come our way, what we need to do, we avoid head collision. Head collision. Try as much, you know, like now. Let me bring it home. It is possible here in the staff room, either... Sister comes and summons you. Why are you late? What, what would be the excuse? Just find yourself. Especially if something really happened. Is that the way to go? Did you realize that in this institution there is a, what you signed, what binds you, is willing to listen to what happened? Then express it. Or you were coming, maybe a matatu or something, even right in your house, went wrong. Would you mind to go and say, hey, please, teacher so-and-so, I'm held up. Can you go to my class, take this time, so that when I come, I will take your hour. How many of us will do that? Or you would want to make sure that eh, people should know, Nikonashida. How many of us want to make people know that they have problems? Everyone has problems. And if you keep shouting your problems, you die poor. Avoid a collision. Or, how many times have you done it? You know, when I was in the seminary, I like using my stories. A seminary or a formation it reached at, at a point things were not easy. And that time, I, I, I really meditated getting out of it. So one of my priest friend, a spiritual director, the, asked, Dennis, what is happening? Have you lost the focus of becoming a priest? I said, not really. But I really, I can't cope with one or two things. He, he said to me, you are stupid if you leave priesthood. And I've written that story in this book. You are stupid. Look at somebody next to you and tell them you can be stupid also. <laughs> when you change your focus when it's not the right time. When you drive on a highway, there is a specific turning point, true or false. Until you turn, even if you have made a mistake, you should not turn. 
How many times have you turned anal? Just ask in your notes. How many times have you made unnecessary U-turns in life? Be sincere to yourself. You start even a project before it matures, you have given up. You get into a relationship before it is tested, you have said, this one is not giving me enough money. Jesus Christ. <laughs> By the way, what is relationship made of? We are coming there. Avoid head collision. Number three, we have this system of overcoming problems or challenges. It doesn't mean that we are safe. Like now, we have just gotten out of the restrictions. We have a lot of interactions. It is easy for me and you in such a moment to celebrate, true or false. Ah, oh, I made it. You made it. You get excited. Like now, this is January. Some of us are going to get the first Saturday after a long time. You will see what you will do next week. I don't know whether you will go to Kissy Town, you come back on Monday. You go on Friday. <laughs> Did I say something? You get some people accompanying you and they were not there during the month. That is the time you start receiving calls. Hey, there's something happening. Come, come over. Come over, we have... One for the road as we talk. Or a, a cup of... Do you know? We easily get excited and we lose the focus. That's why I want to tell you this. When you overcome a challenge, it's not time to celebrate, but the time to evaluate your life. Evaluate. Like now, this is the time you really need to know what kind of people you should work with as partners. Are they people you can trust? Look at the people you kept sharing during the last nine months. Why would you want to introduce foreigners now? There's those people, when things were bad, they would not even pick your call. Now they will start planning some trips, some celebrations, and they will need some contribution from you. Are you conscious that you need to keep, even yourself, as a teacher? How, you know, are you conscious of what you went through, even when you come to the school, you don't bring that package into the students? What happened for those who are married? When your spouse kept nagging from you, we don't have this, we don't have this, yet you are there, both of you, the whole day. Was there an understanding? Do you think, forget about, you know, I'm talking about married people as if uh, all of us are married here. Forget about that. In this, this staff room, how many of us will say that uh, the people who are around here are their best friends? How many are you? You say 20? Huh? Eh? 22. Now, can you take some time and write your past 10 friends? Write one to ten. List them. Because we need to have a deal. Yeah, take time. List your ten best friends. You are done, the challenge is over. But also I will not wait for every one of you to be done. Some of you, you can take your sweet time. Now, who has... More than seven names. Thank you. Five and above. Below five, you need to put up your socks because time is up. <laughs> now, this is what I really need to check. How many out of the people you have written, how many have more than three seated in this room? Three. Two. One. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. I asked. 
it's, it's okay. But I said uh, that justification is good. And I said a simple question. Write for me the best 10 friends. I didn't just limit you. There can be more than 10. But look at this. Fimbo Yambari. Even if you have 100 plus best friends away, if you corrupt here, who will pick you up? How is your bond with the next person? That's exactly why even marriages don't work. Somebody has a best friend out of his spouse. You struggle to live with that man or that woman, it doesn't work. The same way, institutions don't work. Teamwork doesn't work if we don't build friendship. Look at the time you spend here. You eat together. You share. That's why sometimes, by the way, even when you struggle in class, you don't feel well. You cannot excuse yourself. Ask another teacher to take your time so that you go and rest when you are well. Come and work. We are so self-centered. Our friends are maybe in big schools where we would wish to go, and we think this is a small school. When we overcome problems, it's time to evaluate. That's why I want to put you on toes. It's time to evaluate whom do you work with. Do you know some of us, we have set the school score that we have never achieved? Science teachers, are you there? What is the elastic limit? Or where does the chain break? Yeah? So, uh, what more physics? How about physics is not in this school? When? Elastic limit is reached. Now, have you reached your elastic limit? I can tell you out of the 22, the weakest of you is the one who will bring the whole staff room down. Look at each other now. <clears throat> when you ignore my issues, my weaknesses, you say, Kiram to. It's not so. As far as we work together, you ignore my weaknesses. That is, even when you drive a car, if you ignore one wheel that is not well, or as less air, what happens? Garina yumba yumba. You can go to class. Have you ever gone to class? Unaingia class, like everyone is in a somber mood after some teachers slept. How long would it take you to bring the learners into the right mood? And because you keep ignoring that, you keep suffering. You will work hard. But because there is a spoiler, you pay for the prices of ignoring him or her. <coughs> Did I say something? Have you done it before? Are you conscious like if like students mess up in your lesson, you don't discipline them at the end of the lesson because you will affect their moods in the next lesson? Can you be patient to deal with them at the beginning of your lesson, so that the, during the 45 minutes, you would have already pondered. If you think education is expensive, how many of us have been ignorant and have paid the costs? The last season of our lives. The last season of our lives. It's a season when we get into coldness or darkness. Like when it's cold, majority of us are in jackets. Why? We want to keep warm. There is a prosperity you sit in this staff room, but you find it very cold. Everyone is there, but you are on your own world. Have you ever asked yourself, what is wrong? Is it possible that you decide one day, uh, there's this expression I always use, yenda. <laughs> to a home where they have written on the gate, or uh, uh, that gate when you approach, what do you do? 
thank you. You don't even touch the gate. You start shouting from a distance. Who is here? Like a mad person. But your madness has been triggered because of what? The sign. Now look at somebody next to you. We just make people get scared of us. There is no way we can, you know, if like you are asked to sit the way you are seated here, Utama. You cannot pair, you know. We are happy to change our sitting positions. How many? Thank you. How many of us? If you find somebody like if you are such a meeting, somebody has sat on your space, you will go and look for sanitizers to sanitize the place before. When it is cold, we need warmth. It's not when we need to fold our arms. We need to open them to embrace others for us to be warm. When we have issues, it's not the time to close up. It's time to open up. Maybe someone somewhere will listen to you and they will guide you. As a team, unless we work for that, we don't go anywhere. Now, some exercise for you personally. Question number one. How many people do you know that are going through tough times? How many people do you know that are going through tough times? How many? Question number two. How many have you tried to help? How many have you tried to help? How many have you tried to help? Question number three. What challenge did you face in the process of assisting someone? What challenge did you face? What challenge did you face? Number four. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? That brings me to the second part that I want to discuss with you. And here I invite every one of you to help me share some insights of what you know about cooperation and collaboration. Time to show off again Walimu Akingereza. What's the difference? Yeah? What's the difference? Cooperation and cooperation. Cooperation Uh-huh. Ah, I love that, but I don't know why you negated cooperation. When you cooperate, is when everyone is willing to give their best for the common good. Willing. We get into an engagement because I'm ready to make a sacrifice for something. Which, in teamwork, I say it doesn't need everyone to be equal, for you to see that maybe it's not giving enough. But cooperation is like what the institution has said. You have to sign a contract, an agreement. You work as per the agreement. And that's why when we want to reach outstanding performances, we need to go beyond the set agreements and make the sacrifice to cooperate. That's why I want to ask these three questions. What will you do to enhance the cooperation in this staff room? What will you do to enhance cooperation in this staff room? What will you do to enhance cooperation in this staff room? 
Number two, what would be your expectation? What would be your expectations? And number three, what legacy would you want to leave? What legacy would you want to leave? What legacy would you want to leave? Are we there? Great. So, your head's up now. Mwalim Kule Nyuma, say number one. No, 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 say one. Sorry. Okay. No. Four. Okay. One. One. Sir, help your neighbor to say the number next. Eh? <laughs> Two. Now, you are taking a break. All number ones form a group. All number twos get into the same group. All number threes, the same group. All number fours, the same group. Don't miss to go to your group. Answer those questions. See you after 15 minutes. Shukuru sana kwa kukuja. Wengi wetu tulikuwa tumebaki kwa yale mapicho tuliyopata. Lakini tunashukuru kwa sababu umetupa mafunzo ambayo tatuwezesha katika ku, kusonga mbele na maisha. Asante sana na karibu siku nyingine. Father, uh, the colleague teachers, uh, I'm humbled to be part of this group. I think I've gained much. Uh, from, as I put my expectation before we began the session, it was that after this session, I become much better than I was before the session and I'm grateful. I feel rejuvenated and uh, going forward we're going to work as power what we have gained so that we can uh, better this institution and we will welcome you back uh, soon so that you can assess us what we have done and the way forward. Thank you. Uh, to my team and uh, all the teachers, it is good that we put what we have learned into practice. That is to become more practical and work as a team from what we have learned in this session. Uh, Reverend Father Dennis, our deputy, colleague teachers, uh, good afternoon. God is good. And all the time, uh, I want to take this chance to thank Father uh, for taking us through this session and being very generous in sharing his experiences with us. Father, I say on behalf of these teachers that we have gained a lot and we appreciate that. Our prayer is that we put it into practice. I want to encourage the uh, the leaders in the groups to ensure that we have done the assignment we have been given. I'm very sure uh, we will even achieve before the three months you have given us. How is it? Because the team I have, I know all of us are capable and we are ready to work. So I want to wish you well.